What is going on YouTube? I am Lamont at large today. I'm in St. Louis, Missouri at the Jefferson Barracks Cemetery. I'm going to visit the grave of Dennis Edwards. He's one of the lead singers of one of the greatest groups ever of all time, in my opinion anyways, The Temptations. So we're going to walk to his grave. We're going to talk a little bit about his history and the tragic end to his life. Without further ado, let's get right into the video. Dennis Edwards was born February 3rd, 1943 in Fairfield, Alabama, which is pretty much a suburb of Birmingham. Uh, he's only 10 miles from where Eddie Kendricks was born, which was in Birmingham. Uh, they didn't know each other growing up, as far as I know. So little Dennis started singing in his father's church when he was about two years old. The uh, father was a pastor of that church and pretty strict uh, rules growing up in that home. One of those homes, you know, where the family always seems to be at church four or five, maybe even six days a week. When you get out of school, straight to church. When you're not in church, you're sleeping. And when you wake up the next day, it's Saturday, we're going to church. <laughs> One of those homes. So he's singing as a little boy. When he's about 10 years old, the family moves from Birmingham up to Detroit. I don't know why they moved could be to open up another church or maybe he found a job over there or what have you. I'm not really sure. So they move up to Detroit and as Dennis is growing into a teenager, uh, he's still singing in his father's church and eventually he would become the choir director of that church. And while he was doing that, 16, 17 years old, he's studying at the Detroit Conservatory School of Music. Now his first foray into joining up with a musical group was when he linked up with a couple of guys and they had a gospel group called the mighty clouds of joy now again you're a teenager you're growing up in detroit and you know you got a lot of uh, popular musicians coming in out of around detroit and you got motown soon coming up and father and mother says you know Listen, if you're going to listen to that kind of music, if you're going to listen to, you know, Jackie Wilson and all of that, you can't do it in our home. So if probably he'd sneak out and go to his friend's house and listen to music and watch TV. And then, of course, your hormones are raging. So, you know, girls are listening to the newest music and, you know, you want to join your friends or what have you. So after disbanding from this group uh, he would go on to form his own group called dennis and the fireballs and uh he put out a couple of singles from 1961 to around 1960 uh no i think it was just 1961 uh, he had two hits i don't really think they hit anywhere uh and then uh he recorded the song i didn't have to but i did i never heard the song Probably will play it uh, after I'm done recording this video. So from 1961 to 1963, uh, Dennis joins the United States Army and he goes overseas. I don't believe he saw any combat. Uh, most of his time was spent uh, in Europe. So from 1961 to 1963, he's in the U.S. Army. So he gets out honorable discharge and he wants to be a singer. Uh, so here is how he you know, became known as one of the temptations. So in 1966, uh, Dennis, he gets an audition with Motown. Now, by then, Motown has made many, many stars. Uh, the Four Tops, The Supremes, The Temptations. I mean, many, 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 many. So he has an audition and he's singing for Barry Gordy. He's the lead of the leader, the founder of Motown. So Barry Gordy is one of these guys. He like he would be a really good poker player because you never know what he's thinking. I mean, even when he was talking about Michael Jackson auditioning for him with the Jackson five, he just sat there. He's like. And then, you know, when he went. Uh, away from his chair and he went into the sound room he's like man sign these freaking kids you know because he couldn't contain himself but he was very a reserved man so even if you were a good singer as dennis was 
This guy was just sitting there like unimpressed. So he auditions for him and well, Barry, or I'm sure it's Barry that told him, he said, listen, I got some good news and I got some bad news for you. And you know, we all love good news and bad news. So he says, listen, um, what do you want first, the bad news or the good news? He said, give me the good news. We all love good news. So he says, well, the good news is I'm going to sign you to a deal. Not really a deal, more like a retainer. And he said, well, what's a retainer? What is this? Something you put in your mouth or whatever? No. He said, well, this is what I do. I'll pay you 500 bucks a week as a retainer where you can only work for Motown. We're not going to put out an album with you quite yet pay you 500 bucks a week 1966 500 bucks a week that's pretty good money now the only thing is i don't know what the contractual words were in this said contract but i'm pretty sure he would use him for talent for whatever group he was going to make um maybe if somebody had a song that they had written and he needs somebody to kind of sing it to see how what it you know would sound like he'd have to do it a lot of times those contracts there'll be stipulations where you know you definitely can't work for any other uh, music labels and they can't be working you to death so maybe i don't know you come in i don't know five times a month or whatever i'm not really sure exactly what they did but uh so now he works for motown he wants to be a lead singer he wants to be a singer he's a very good singer but right now he's kind of being stifled so he signed under motown but 500 bucks a week what are you gonna do his first assignment after being signed to Motown or given a retainer, whatever you want to call it, is that uh, he's assigned to join the Contours. Uh, the Contours, their famous song was uh, Do You Love Me? Do you love me? I'm in the groove. Do you love? Anyways, you know what I'm talking about. So he's singing with them, and he's really not digging this. I mean, the Contours, they're a, a semi-successful group, but that's not what he wants. He wants to be a singer. So later on, he would try to break his record contract because he really, really wants to work with uh, singer, songwriters, and producers Lamont Dozier and the Holland brothers, Brian and Eddie. Uh, these guys used to work for Motown and they wrote uh, a, a, quite a few hits. Uh, they also wrote some very, very big hits for the Supremes. They wrote uh, Baby Love and Stop in the Name of Love and uh, You Keep Me Hanging On. So, and, and I know they, they wrote a lot of other songs too. So they left Motown uh, and they were trying to start uh, Invictus Records. So they really wanted to sign Dennis, but he was still in their contract with Motown. Now, by this time, Dennis had became friends with a man named David Ruffin, who is the original lead singer of The Temptations. However, The Temptations are looking to fire David Ruffin because they're tired of his antics. Uh, this guy really got into the groove of that rock star life. Um, using drugs, constantly re uh, late to rehearsals. Um, the other members were getting fed up and they were actually looking for a new singer to replace David. So I want to say it was around the summer of 1968. They did. So they fired David Ruffin and they hired Dennis Edwards to replace him. And everything is going fine. Everything is great you know uh, now dennis felt a little bit weird because david is his friend so he didn't want to like kind of go behind his back but you know hey dude you, you got a good thing you know you're a worldwide famous entertainer and you know but you got problems or whatever and we'll discuss those problems we'll, we'll talk about that when we get up to michigan about uh, david ruffin who you know basically everybody knows him as he's the when you think of the temptations people think of david ruffin uh, that's the general consensus I've seen online. So he gets hired and the group, they perform 
I, I want to say it could be Los Angeles. So they perform, and the original Temptations, they started off the show with just them, and then they later brought on Dennis Edwards, like, oh, this is the new lead singer, and then he finished on the concert. Now, by this time, when he's ready to do his own full concert, David Ruffin, during the, the group's performance, so as Dennis is you know singing, just starting, David Ruffin comes out onto the stage and it's like, hey, I'm going to sing along with you guys. <laughs> now, listen, I don't know how he got on the stage. I don't know who led him. I don't know who gave him a microphone. I don't know if, if this was a publicity stunt. I have no idea. But, you know, David, he would do this quite a number of different times where he would upstage the group and say, oh, I'm bad, guys, something along those lines. So... You know, so the guys, the manager, they tell Dennis, like, they said, listen, um, we're going to hire David back as the lead singer. We need you to fall back. But look, we promise we're going to work with you. We're going to make you a star. We're going to give, you know, we're going to record some albums, yada, yada, yada. So David Ruffin is back with The Temptations. So David Ruffin is scheduled to perform as, you know, now I guess he's cleaned up his act. Uh, no more shenanigans, no more shenanigans. He's going to be a serious musician. He's not going to be late anymore. He's going to kick the drugs. He's just going to go forward. He's like, let's do this, guys. Our next date. He tells the other temptations, hey, guys, be on time, will you? Be on time, okay? We got our rehearsals to do. 8 p.m. sharp. The Temptations live. 8 p.m. comes. He doesn't show up. <laughs> he doesn't show up. So uh, I'm assuming the other Temptations kind of took turns uh, singing the uh, songs. <laughs> You're out of here, David. You're out of here. So he is done data. So... Dennis comes on and he is now the new singer of The Temptations. And from 1968 to 1988-89, on and off for about 20 years, Dennis would be the lead singer of The Temptations. Uh, he would um, be the lead singer on two well-known songs that they sang, uh, Cloud Nine, and of course, my, uh, my song that pretty much... Uh, you know, says all there is to say about my life. Papa was a rolling stone. That's for sure. Papa's a rolling stone. And so he would do that. Um, he would also try to go on his own. Uh, he had a, a semi-successful uh, solo career. So he did get the career that he wanted in terms of him being a solo act and a you know big time singer it probably just didn't come to be the success that he wanted it to be in the mid 80s dennis would come out with three solo albums and the biggest hit he had on either of his albums was don't look any further uh, that got quite a bit of radio play if you've never heard the song a couple of hip-hop acts actually have used that song and have sampled it, uh, including Tupac hit him up, uh, Tupac and Jodeci, How Do You Want It, which is an excellent song, and uh, Junior Mafia, Get Money, amongst others. And there was a time where Dennis was dating Aretha Franklin, and uh, in an interview, Aretha said that her song Daydreaming was about Dennis, uh, that she was really smitten uh, with that man uh, daydreaming is one of those songs that you know when you hear the song you're like yeah i know that song and you start singing along with it and you realize that you don't know the words to any of it you're just babbling i wouldn't even i wouldn't even attempt to do that right now because i'm just gonna make a, a fool out of myself so i'm probably not gonna go ahead and do that uh, so later on, um, after disbanding from Aretha Franklin, uh, he would go on to marry Ruth Pointer of the Pointer Sisters. And they would go on to have a child, Isa Pointer, who would later go on to join her mother's group, the Pointer Sisters. And uh, sadly, this guy, you know, 
after he left the Temptations, he would go on to form his own group. Uh, he couldn't call it the Temptations because of you know contractual issues. So I believe he called it the Temptations Review with Dennis Edwards. So he did that for a while, uh, right up until he got sick. Uh, at the time, him and his wife Brenda were living here in St. Louis, and then he suffered a stroke, and uh, they moved him to Chicago. I'm assuming to be closer to the care facility. I, I'm not exactly sure on that. And uh, right about a couple days before his 75th birthday, uh, he passed away. Uh, he was battling meningitis at the time of his death. And uh, this is his grave right here. Dennis Edwards Jr. Specialist, United States Army. Loving husband, temptations forever. And there was some, uh, I don't know if there's, these are rumors, but you know, you, you're going to read a lot of stuff on online. Uh, there was some allegations of abuse from his wife that uh, she supposedly tried to kill him or something along those lines. And now she's vehemently denied uh, any and all accusations. And I can't really speak any further of it because she didn't go to jail. So obviously either there was no proof or it was just a bunch of rumors. I have no idea. Uh, they were saying that she tried to smother a, a pillow over his face or some nonsense. I I don't know. I have no idea. But, um, you know, he, uh, you know, very popular man. Uh, he lived the dream that uh, many, many people wish they could even uh, taste. You know what I mean? And, you know, his voice, if I could describe the way he sang, and this is no slight on anybody. He, imagine if Luther Vandross was trying to give a sermon and he was really feeling the Holy Spirit. I mean, that's how he's saying. He was a very, very good singer. Uh, some might even say he was uh, the best singer of The Temptations. Me personally, I think he was the best singer. That he had the best voice to me. But, you know, of course, you got, you know, Eddie and, and David and the way they sang their own songs with The Temptations, you know, I think that's up for debate. But anyways, uh, rest in peace to Dennis Edwards and uh, just, uh, you know, a part of music history. And, uh, you know, he really was the one that that bridged the segue between like more of a pop, not a pop, but like a like a soul sounding temptations into like more, one that sounded more like 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 soul and funk which a lot of people didn't really care for, but yeah, what are you going to do? You can't please everybody all the time. All right, rest in peace to Dennis and all those who have served our, served our nation. Some of them gave up their freedoms for a little while. Some of them gave up their very lives. Okay, guys. I am out of here. I have some uh, automotive issues to address. I will catch up with you on the next video. I hope to see you there. Oh, and by the way, before I leave, if anybody's still watching, nah, I don't think anybody's still watching. I'll catch up with you later. Have a good one. Peace out.